a reversing loop including block detection. Can I get my head around that? Hi, welcome back to Home Warren 009. I'm Mark. Um, as you've probably seen in previous videos, I am a total novice to this. I'm learning all the time. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm not sure how things work. So a lot of it is experimenting, playing, thinking through things through. Now, the last video was about starting getting the track on the fiddle yard. I've got the loops for the storage of the locos. I've now got to work on the other end about how I change the polarity on the reversing loop part of it. Um, and also how I detect that there are trains in those storage loops. Um, so this is really my thought processes and how I've tried to get round working out how it all works. It, um, I'm going to keep it short. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get down to any practical stuff in this video, but we'll give it a try. So um, here we go. Right, as you know, I am designing my fiddle yard around a reversing loop. And the reason I want to do that is I want trains to be able to come off the layout, go into one of the storage loops with the engine at the front, and then when I'm ready to release it back onto the layout, I want to just be able to drive it out again with the engine at the front of the train. I don't have to uncouple anything. I don't have to recouple anything. I don't have to touch the train or the engine. I simply can just let the train run out back onto the reversing loop and then back onto the main layout. As you're also aware, reversing loops have an issue and that is with polarity. And I know I'm going back to basics here, but I just want to follow through so that I've got it clear in my mind on my thought process on how I'm going to resolve this. And the other issue I've got is I want to get block detection on all of my storage loops within the reversing loop itself. So here goes. So my main layout, I have wired with my red cable or red wire at the front and the black wire to the back. And so that has followed through from the main line into the reversing loop. So I've got red to the front, black to the back, and again, and again, and again. But now we can see there's going to be an issue because the red has gone to the back and the black is now at the front. So we have got a conflict between the black and the red wires here and here. Now, if I actually lay it out that way and wire it that way and leave it that way as soon as I run an engine on there I am going to end up with a short circuit because the black wire and the red wire are in conflict um, that's going to cause a short which will stop the trains on the layout or the power district depending on how it's wired and it also may cause um, damage to some of the components especially the DCC stuff because uh, being computer program stuff it's very susceptible to short circuits and surges so how am i going to get around this well the simplest way would be to put an isolated block within the loop itself i can then change the polarity within that block either by fitting a double pole double throw toggle switch or i could just put in a basic auto reverse device such as the gauge master dcc 40 prodigy now with the auto reverse devices they pick up the current from outside the loop and then when the train goes into the the uh, reversing loop it causes a short circuit but that is only for a millisecond a tiny fraction of a second um the train doesn't notice it. Um, it won't affect the running of the train. It won't affect the lights because the device picks it up and throws the polarity that quick that the train just won't notice it's happened. I understand, though, that if that happens too many times and if you've got a really busy layout, I suppose this could happen. My layout is not going to be that busy. But at the end of the day, it, this happening too many times as your engine goes over could cause slight damage or you know to your your equipment so i'm looking at another way of doing this um 
and the way I'm going to go, because I'm using digi keys anyway, is I'm going to go for the digi keys DR5013, which is their auto reverse device. Now, to use that, I've got to break the loop into four sections rather than in just one. And that has to be done like this. So each of the single triangles points to where I've got to make a cut into the rail. The hourglass or double triangle is where I've got to make a cut in the track in both rails opposite each other. So what we've effectively done is formed four individual blocks. Now these blocks in the DigiKeys manual are labelled up as this and this is how I'm going to label them up as well. So you've got SO and S3 which will be wired into a DigiKeys DR4088 which is their detection device so that I know an engine has gone into one of those two blocks or is sitting in one of those two blocks. The S1 and the S2 actually go back to the DR5013 which is a Digi Reverse. So again the detection picks those up and shows that there's a engine in there or a train in there. Now the way this works differently from just having a normal device in such as the um, Gauge Master DCC40 is that the polarity on here is not changed by a short circuit. The train comes off the main line, goes into these isolation blocks. The DR5013 picks up that there's a train there and says it's to itself there's going to be an issue with polarity. So at that point, it changes the polarity on the main loop, which is now highlighted in yellow. It doesn't wait for the short circuit. It anticipates that, changes the polarity so that the engine can keep running and the engine is not actually causing the short itself. And therefore you don't get even that minute part bit of damage to the engine or its components. So that's fine, that sounds like a good way to go. But, that's changing the polarity. But how do I detect trains in that loop? I know where they are if they're in SO or S1 or S2 or S3, but I don't know where they are in the yellow area. Now mine, fiddle yards, are not just as simple as one loop. I've actually got five loops. So I want to be able to detect if there's a train sitting there, in there and which one it is. So... The way I'm going to proceed with this is still using the DigiKeys uh, components and I'm going to set it up like this. So the DigiKeys DR5000 is the Digi control. That's the main unit. That puts the power into the track and sends the DCC signal into the track. Now, if I spur off that, and again, this is following the instructions from DigiKeys, I can put a feed into the digi keys or digi reverse dr5013 and as you can see from here we've still got the two feed lines going in now they go straight through the device so that it can do its business with the polarity and then it goes off and connects to the rails in the actual loop now if this was just one continuous loop there would just be one connection but because I've got the isolating points on my five storage yards, I will need to put a connection on either side of the loop. So I've got power and signal going in to the entrance and the exit um, tracks for the, the, um, the reversing loop. Now, when it comes to those other five loops, I want to be able to detect the trains there. And for that, I need a 4088. So let's put one of those in place. So when I first thought about this, I thought I was going to have a number of problems and I'll show you why in this brief clip from a previous video. Okay, so the black common wire goes to this side of the track. The red wires, which are the detection wires, um, we've got little um, circuit, uh, little breaks along here. Um, so black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. They, the red ones feed back to the detection unit. The black ones are the common that go off um, and join elsewhere. Now my thought is, if this unit is switching the polarity from here 
So the train comes in and it gets, switches round, another train comes out and it switches round the other way. Now with that polarity switching backwards and forwards, and this is a loop, will it affect the whole loop? If it does, does that mean that these red wires then become the common wires and the black wires become the feed wires to the detection? Which is no good because they don't actually feed back to the detection unit so the system won't see where the train is and will it cause damage to the units. Well that was interesting watching that back. Um, I basically showed it because obviously I made a mistake on how the DR4088 works. Um, I had a think through after I made that video and I plundered on it and I drew out little diagrams and stuff um, and then I caught up with a couple of videos as well which steered me even more into the direction that I'm finally going to go in. The two videos was Iron Planet Hobbies that was doing a review of the DR5013. They were still saying about block detection on the reversing loop so I knew it could be done, it's still working out how it could be done. Now the other thing that gave me a clue, or the other video that gave me a clue, was DCC Train Automation, who did a review on the LS5410 digital reverse loop device. They used that in conjunction with the DR4088 and the DR5000. And again, they were talking about feedback from the blocks. So again, I knew it could be done, and that triggered a bit more. And then I've got to realising that it's not the flow of current through the device in one direction. It can be in either direction. The devices that we use are current sensing devices. Therefore, as long as there's a current there, it can run in either direction. So, getting my head around that, I have now come up with the following. Right, considering all that, how do we detect trains or engines that are sitting on one of the five storage loops on the fiddle board within the reversing loop? Now for that we're going to use the three devices I've already mentioned, that's the DR5000 Digi Control, the DR5013 which is the Digi Reverse and the DR4088 which is our detection device. Now to wire these together we take two cables or two wires out from the DR5000 and we feed those to the bottom of the DR5013. Now these two terminals are marked up as track so we know which ones to put it in. The DR5013 when it's working will then decide which way that current needs to go and it's got two options. It can put the current out through the orange wire or through the green wire. So let's say it's going to put it through the green wire. So the current goes up through the green wire and then comes through to the top and into one of the two common ports of the DR4088. From there the current then leaves the 4088 via one of the sensing terminals or ports and that goes and is fed to the track by one of the blue wires. From there when a train comes in and sits on that track the current will then go through the train and then come out via the orange wire and then that is fed back to the DR5013. So the DR4088 has got a current running through it and it has picked it up and it will put that signal via the loco net connection through the DR5000 back to iTrain so we can see it on the screen. Okay, so now if the 5013 picks up a train in the other direction and it needs to swap the current over, it will now put the current through the orange wire, which will then feed directly down to the tracks. The train, once it sits on that track, will then transfer the current through itself and onto the other rail, which is then picked up by the blue wire the blue wire feeds the current back into the Digi Keys DR4088 through one of the sensing ports, and then it will come back out through that uh, from the DR4088 to the DR5013, 
and then from there to the DR5000. But the fact that that current has gone through the DR4088 means that the device has picked up that there is a flow of current and again through the loco net reports that back to the DR5000 which then reports that back to iTrain so we can see that there is a train on that loop. I hope that makes sense. So the question at the beginning of the video was could I get my head around it? Yeah, well finally I have. I now know how it works and where I was going wrong. So what's the next step? The next step is actually to lay the last bits of track on the fiddle yard so the actual reversing loop is complete. Um, as I'm doing that I will be putting the dropper wires on as well. The dropper wires I'm going to colour code the same as the isolation blocks which are the same as the ones in the DigiKeys manual. Um, and as soon as that's in place, then I will start getting ready for the next video, which will be installing the point motors and wiring everything up on the fiddle board. And then that will hopefully be the fiddle board uh, finished and ready for installation. Then I can turn my mind to the Helix, which I've still got to get down to B&Q and get some wood cut up for it. So I'm going to call it a day there. Thank you for watching again. Hope you found it useful. I hope you don't think I'm too stupid, and I don't need an answer for that one, thank you. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed things, maybe you would uh, like to subscribe. I have got a few more subscribers now, and it's nice. I am um, surprised. I mean, I don't think, I'm not sure what sort of job I'm doing with these videos, or whether my content is of interest, but obviously somebody's finding something out of it um, and subscribing. So if you have, please do, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye for now. What are you doing? That's a good boy. <laughs>